From Crunch Econometrics, thank you for joining me. I'll be discussing how you can estimate VAR models in EVUs. The word autoregressive refers to the presence of the lagged values of the dependent variable on the right-hand side of the equation. While the word vector simply implies that the system contains a vector of two or more variables. So when do you construct a VAR model? You construct a VAR model only if the variables are integrated of order one, that is, your variables are stationary after first difference. Likewise, if the variables are co-integrated, you construct both short run, which is the VAR model, and the long run model, which is the vector error correction. So once co-integration is confirmed, go ahead to run both the VAR and the VECM models. But if there is no co-integration, you can only run the VAR model and not the VECM. Remember that in a VAR system, all your variables are endogenous. You do not have any exogenous variables in a VAR system. All variables are simply endogenous. On the screen is an example of a VAR model with three variables. I have here the log of PCE, the log of PDI, and the log of GDP. All these three variables are also color coded so that you can easily identify their lagged values on the right hand side of the equation. For instance, for the log of PCE in red is a compact way of writing its lagged values. Again, for PDI in green, the log of PDI, you can see here that this is a compact way of writing the lagged values of the log of PDI, and same explanations goes for the log of GDP. So if you have um, your own variables, simply specify them out in this form. Yours could be three, yours could be four or five variables. So simply specify all your uh, variables in your vast system in this way. Remember that the dependent variable, as you can see, is a function of its lagged values and also the lagged values of other variables in the model. One thing you have to also note is that your VAR must be specified in levels and not in false difference. You can see here, these are the level forms of specifying all these variables. Once you specify your VAR in differences, you have simply misspecified that model. Never specify your VAR model in false differences, only specify them in their level form. Again, the use, which are the error terms here, are simply called impulses or innovations or shocks in the language of VAR. The VAR model is estimated by ordinary least squares. You have to decide on your maximum lag length, K, which in this case is an empirical issue. And why do I say so? If you have too many lags, you lose degrees of freedom. Most of your coefficients may become statistically not significant due to the presence of multicollinearity. Also, if you have too few lags, you may end up incurring some specification errors. So what do you do? You have to rely on the optimal lags as indicated by this information criterion, AIC, SC, or HQIC. Lastly, how do you go about interpreting the results of your VAR model? Simply interpret them in the ceteris paribus arguments, as you will interpret ordinary or least squares results. This is because inferences can be based on the same OLS standard errors and test statistics. So interpreting your VAR results should not be a problem. Simply use the ceteris paribus arguments and you're good to go. So let's move on to EVUs now and estimate an example. EVUs is up, so here I'll be using the log of PCE, PDI, and GDP. My variables are from 1970 quarter one to 1991 quarter four. So in total, I have 88 observations. To estimate the VAR model involving these three variables, we simply go to quick, click on estimate VAR, so here you can see that the standard VAR button is chosen by default. I leave it the way it is. In the endogenous variables column, I type in all the variables in the VAR system. Remember, there are no 
exogenous variables. All variables in the VAR model are simply endogenous. I leave the lag intervals the way they are, maximum of two lags for each of the variables, and I click OK. There you can see on the screen is the output from the VAR model. You can see up here vector autoregression results. So please stay with me in part two where I discuss the results.